Today I'm going to be drilling out of position. I'm standing here in no man's land. I'm going to be hitting volleys. Drilling is important and we need to drill those shots that we think we'll commonly have in a game. But I think there's good value in drilling shots where we're out of position a little bit. None of us want to be caught in no man's land, but the reality is we all get caught in no man's land. So today I'm going to try to hit volleys out of no man's land. I have a separate video where I'm drilling out of position taking dink shots and trying to drop those in the kitchen across the net. I'll put the link to that video in the description box below. Nobody wants to be caught in no man's land, but the reality is we all get caught in no man's land at some point. If we've drilled this, if we've drilled hitting volleys while I'm out of position, then we'll be better at that during the game. This is a really good drill to work with your drilling partner. So I would have my drilling partner up on the kitchen line feeding me balls and we're trying to keep this rally going. So my drilling partner is hitting balls to me that I have to volley out of the air. And then my job is to control that ball back to them. I'm trying to control to their forehand side, their backhand side, or right down the middle. We would do this drill for 10 or 15 minutes where my partner is feeding me balls that I have to volley out of the air. And then we switch roles. I would go stand on the kitchen line and hit balls to my drilling partner who's in no man's land and get them to practice hitting those volleys out of the air and controlling where that ball goes and trying to extend those rallies, extend that control as much as we can. Part of that drilling time, we would also take and practice hitting balls at the feet. So my partner would try and take some of those balls, put them down at my feet, gives them practice targeting my feet, gives me practice trying to dig those balls up off the court that come down at my feet. So that's a good way to take part of that drilling time and vary it up. So most of it would be I'm trying to take these balls out of the air and volley them. And then my partner would also practice trying to put some of those balls down at my feet on both sides, my left side and my right side, to give me practice trying to dig those balls off the court on my forehand and on my backhand side. It's early in the morning, just after 5 a.m. So my drilling partner is not here. I'm going to use my ball machine to feed me balls in the air that I'm going to volley both on the forehand and the backhand side. I have a separate video where I have the balls coming down at my feet and I have to dig those up and off of the court. I'll put a link to that video in the description box below. Enough talking. Let's go hit some balls. All right, so I'm in no man's land. I'm trying to take these volleys out of the air. So if I practice this, then I may be better in a game when I have to do this and control it. I'm trying to exhale every time I hit. I'm trying to be relaxed, let the paddle do most of the work. I'm not trying to power through this ball. I'm really just trying to control this, trying to move. So if I can use my left hand out by this ball, I get a good reference for where this ball is, where my paddle needs, where it needs to be when I hit this ball. Look this ball all the way in, try and look for holes in the ball. That means you're concentrating on it. Also it lets you see any spin on this ball. So I am out of position. I'm not where I need to be now. If you have a drilling partner or a ball machine, you can vary the speed so I can have the balls come faster and lower at me, or I can come, have them come higher and loopier. I may get both in the game, so I want to practice some variation. If I want to make it tougher, I move back a little bit. Now this ball is lower, not quite at my feet yet, but lower off the court. A little bit tougher shot to hit. Oh, I missed that one, obviously. All right, so if I want to make this difficult, and if I'm going to drill, I don't want to just drill the easy things. I want to make some of my drilling time difficult because in the game, my partner's, oh, that was ugly. My opponent's trying to make life difficult on me. So I want to struggle on some of these and uh, make life difficult on myself here while I'm drilling. I don't want to just drill easy balls. That was a little bit difficult. That was better. All right, so practice this on the forehand side. We'll go do the backhand side next. Um, try and get that hand out in front so we can feel where that ball is. And let's go do some backhands. All right, backhands. I want to practice backhands as well. So I can get a little bit proficient. Oh, that was not good. All right, so that's better. So 
backhand side, trying to keep my non-paddle hand on the back of this paddle as long as I can, bring it forward with the paddle. That gives my brain information about where that paddle is in space. Also, if I want to push with my left hand a little bit and give myself a little bit more power, that was ugly, I can do that. So for those of you that struggle with not enough power on the backhand side, you can use this left hand to help push this paddle forward. And it will tell your brain where that paddle is in space. So if you're one of these people who does a one-hander, you can do that. I'm not saying you can't. So two things, I don't have as much power, which maybe I don't want, but I also don't have the feedback on where my paddle is in space. Or if you're this person who does the split eagle where you're doing this, they do that in tennis, the equipment's a little bit heavier, and so that's one reason to do that. I think, and yeah, that's my opinion, you can have your own opinion, of course, if I can keep this left hand on the back of the paddle. Really tells me where this paddle is. That didn't help me there. And then gives me power if I want it more so. Again, I can make this drill a little bit more difficult, being a little bit further back. I've got to dig this ball from lower off the court. Makes it a little bit more difficult. A little top spin on that one. So I can be back further and further, inch my way back, make this more difficult, slide forward a little bit, increase the speed on my machine, or ask my partner to hit balls at me harder if I want to. Well, that was ugly. That's better. So a little variation is good. So we don't want to just drill the easy balls. We want to drill some balls that are a little bit challenging. So I might move back, try and dig this ball just off the court. Somebody tried to hit it at my feet, but they left the ball a little bit too high. So this, this would be a good thing to practice. Go practice on your forehand and your backhand side. And when you get in a game, Hopefully this shot's more familiar, you're more proficient at it, and you're just more comfortable. Try and stay as relaxed as you can. Have this paddle do most of the work. Whatever paddle you have, you bought all the magic stuff that's in here in the middle. If you'll relax, hit that ball well, let that paddle do its work, let it do what you paid for it to do, those shots will go better across that net. Hope you found that helpful. If you haven't subscribed already, please do so. I would appreciate it. As always, thank you.